welcome or welcome back to my channel. Don't want it to seem like I am blowing smoke up my own ass. But I don't think I can cuss within like the first three minutes of a YouTube video or they'll try and demonetize me or just suppress my content. They'll silence women. That's what they'll do. I have though what I truly believe is not only the best vintage thrift haul that I have ever done, but maybe the best one that this platform has ever seen. Warning, this is very collective and following a very intense closet clean out earlier this year where I got rid of, I wanna say 35, maybe upwards of 40 items. So, you know, out with the old, in with the new. Well, some of these things are quite literally 100 years old, so historically old, but they're new to me and my in my closet. All right, so starting us off, I have two items that I am already predicting, I'm calling it now, are going to be two of the most worn items this spring and summer, and they are just some white, flowy, cotton dresses. I'm a sucker for a dress. I am such a dress girl, especially going into the spring and summertime. It is the easiest thing to just throw on with some shoes and accessories and be out the door, but still look so cute and fashionable and put together while you're doing this it. This first little cotton nightgown actually is from the 80s. I got it off of Depop for, I wanna say it was like 15, maybe $20. I just loved the crochet detailing on this as well as kind of like tiered bottom poofy effect that was going on. I will say with just all white dresses in general, they tend to lean on the more sheer side, at least all the ones that I like. And so I tend to have to layer some sort of slip under it. It doesn't really bother me. And then I feel like there's a lot of opportunities with layering with that. I also have this belt on with it right now, but I think this also looks really cute. Just kind of free flowing. And without a belt and with the little boots, it's so good. And then the one other white cotton dress that I am just going to be wearing relentlessly this spring and summer, was it was not from Depop and it was not $15 because this is a vintage Edwardian era 1910s lawn style dress. Yeah. So if you know, you know, and if you don't know, basically these dresses, I mean, I'm essentially holding a historical artifact in my hands right now. This is a piece of history that I own, and it is a piece of history that is not so easy to find in a waist size that it's not like a 22, 23 inch, teeny tiny petite princess waist, okay? Because these are so old, a lot of the times they're not in the best condition. A lot of holes, rips, staining, tears, all of that. And the ones that have withstood the test of time are usually the ones that haven't been worn a lot, which makes sense as to why they're all literally this big. They have the waist accurate in real life of an American Girl doll. Being that I do not, in fact, have the in real life measurements of an American Girl doll, nor a 22 inch waist has not necessarily been the easiest task to come across one of these. And so when I saw this at the Rose Bowl in near perfect condition in my size, I took it as a sign that it was fate and I had to have this. And when I saw the price tag was $150 versus some of the other things I'd seen online in the three, four, $500 range, it felt wrong not to buy it. It felt like I would in some way be losing money if I did not take this home with me. 26 year old grown woman math right there. It's just, I mean, it's perfection. It's simply, that's the only way I can think to describe this. I love to how when I have one of these pieces that I feel like it's just doing all of the work. Like I don't need to get crazy with the layering with this, right? I don't need to go in with the accessories. I could if I wanted to, but the dress on its own with just a simple little boot and some simple little jewelry, it, it's doing everything. I feel like any sort of varsity style adjacent clothing has been trending for like, honestly the past couple of years. This is not a trend for me though. This is a lifestyle. I am so deep into the varsity items. It's, it's, it's starting to create a little collection in my wardrobe in specific with any sort of varsity cardigan. It started with a maroon colored one and then my friend gifted me a cream colored one and then I had had on my thrift list that I really wanted to add a blue varsity cardigan to my wardrobe. Initially, I was thinking more of a cobalty royal blue, but I came across this when I was at a thrift store and I just, I loved all of the patches and all of the detailing and this specific shade of blue was just so beautiful and I put it on and I was like, this just looks so good with my eyes and my hair and my skin. And I can already see it mixing in so well with all of these items in my wardrobe. <laughs> what is a woman to do? Well, she is to buy it. That, that simply is the only answer. It really is all of the detailing in this cardigan, even down to like the buttons have this kind of gradient blue effect happening that I just am obsessed with and just made me be like, I have to have this in my life. Also the fact that it is vintage wool from what year did this say? The 60s? And it's not itchy literally at all. 
almost impossible to come by. It just, it was too perfect. Crochet, well, all the time, all year round. We could just end the sentence right there, period. Particularly crochet in the spring and summertime though. Whew. It is so hot and so sexy. And I knew that I wanted to add some vintage crochet items to my wardrobe. So when I found this skirt at the thrift store for $3, yeah, $3. It, say less. One of the times when I was going through my closet and kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to add, I'd realized that I had accumulated quite the collection of vintage white and cream tops, but there wasn't a lot of color going on, especially some fun colorful tops to throw on when it is warmer outside, just like a cute pair of shorts or bloomers or a nice long white maxi skirt. And so I was like, well, I gotta rectify this situation immediately. First up, I got this gingham. Of course, how, how am I simply ever supposed to to resist a gingham item. Come on now. What makes this top so special to me though and why I was like, I have to have it. Well, one, it was $3 at Goodwill. Okay, say less. Two, it has gingham on the front, but this kind of like red bandana pattern happening on the back with all of this beautiful, just like insane beading going on. Next funky top I got is actually another one of my purchases from the Rose Bowl Flea this past weekend. My friend Sydney actually is a vintage reseller and she has the most insane collection of like specifically 1920s, 30s and 40s items and I saw this top. It's from the 1940s. I loved the color. I love the silhouette. I don't have any tops like this in my wardrobe. I just, I, I was like, okay, yeah, you're coming home with me. All of the ribbon detailing as well. It's just, it's so beautiful. Literally threw this outfit on and it's so adorable. Like, yeah, I'm wearing this for the video, but I want to wear this out for the video. I'm going to see, you're going to see more of this on Instagram and TikTok if you follow me on there. If you don't, I mean, it's not me you're hurting, it's really you at the end of the day. And I want what's best for you. And lastly, for the fun, colorful tops, I have this little graphic tee from Depop. I think it was like 12, maybe $15. It's from the 70s, it's single stitch, and it says what's happening at Monk's San Diego on the front. I'm assuming that was some sort of bar in the 70s in San Diego. I did actually try giving it to Google and I could not find anything. So if, if you're familiar with her work, you know Monk's story, feel free to let me know. Some people, most people actually, I would argue, would probably not consider a knee-high leather boot to be their choice of shoe for the spring and summer. However, I, I'm not most people. Some version of a very hot and very sexy, but also somewhat wearable and comfortable red leather boot had been on my thrift list for a while. I like to get specific with my list, all right? I'm getting nitty gritty with those details. I found these initially on Depop though. They're from the brand Dexter, but as I always do on Depop, I let them sit in my car for too long. Somebody else bought them. I was devastated, naturally. So I gave them a little Google search and ended up finding a couple of these available online actually, one of which was on Etsy in my size and for $40 cheaper than the Depop pair, which I took as a sign. Because of course I did. I love me a good pair of overalls. This is by no means new or shocking information in the slightest. I have a little collection of overalls going on, but I realized something that is very overall adjacent that I didn't have in my closet, that I would love to add to my closet, and is actually on my body right now, is a pair of vintage coveralls. These babies were yet another one of my finds from the Rose Bowl flea market this past weekend. When I tell you, I went into that flea market on a mission, okay? My list was prepped and it was ready, and I. And I knew that I was, I was gonna be spending some money and that I did. It's also why I can't go to the Rose Bowl every single month when they have it because I, um, I would be bankrupt. Yeah, I'd be in the name of fashion, but still, I don't consider myself that financially irresponsible. Very oversized, very worn in, and also very old. I believe he said these are from the 1940s and you can tell they've got, they've, they've had some love. They've lived a lot of life in them, which is actually how I wanted the coveralls that I got to look, I was like, oh no, 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 like all of the holes and rips and stains, those are included in the price. I want those. I have a thing for vintage fringe, all right? It's not the first and I, I doubt the last time it'll be brought up on this channel, but I've specifically been on the hunt, endlessly searching, scouring every thrift store, every flea market, the depths of the internet for the vintage fringe jacket of my dreams. I actually had two on my list, a brown and a red one. I would have been happy with either though. There were so many jackets that I came across that were almost what I was looking for and were for just good enough of a price that I was like, hmm, should I let it slide? But I stuck to my guns. I said, no, this is what I want. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna be patient, and eventually I'll find it. And not only did I find one jacket, but I found both of them in the same fucking weekend. 
Is that not, am I being blessed for practicing patience? Is this my manifesting? I, I am now the incredibly proud owner of the vintage fringe jacket of my dreams. Both of these ended up being from Depop and both of them ended up being under $100, which let me tell you, when it comes to a vintage fringe jacket in somewhat good condition, that is not an easy get. Obviously, I was hoping that like one day I would walk into a Salvation Army and I would see this jacket hanging on a rack for $12.99, but it was about two years that I was holding out and eventually I had to be like, girl, we need to be a bit serious. Starting off with the brown fringe, which I've only had this for about a month, but this is already becoming one of the most worn and ran through items in my wardrobe. There isn't a tag anywhere on this jacket, so I'm not quite sure what time period it's from, but it does look very similar in structure to a lot of the fringe jackets from the 70s that I've come across. All of the elements of the jacket were just exactly what I was looking for, down to like the very specific shade of kind of espresso brown. I also love the more oversized fit. I love the fact that there is all this different fringe along all the different aspects of the jacket. It just, it's so cool thrown over anything. I feel like it just instantly elevates an outfit and makes it that much more incredible. And I'm just so happy that I finally found mine. And then we have the other fringe jacket, which is the red fringe. A lot harder and more rare to come across than a brown fringe. And so I will say with this, I wasn't quite as into the specifics as I was with the brown fringe, but I still was waiting to come across the one that I felt like was right for me. There is a tag on this jacket. And so I do know that it's from the 1980s and the silhouette totally reflects that. It has this bit of shoulder padding happening with the silhouette. And it also doesn't have quite as much fringe as the other jacket, which I actually really liked because it did feel like even though these are both fringe jackets, they're different enough that there was some sort of variety in my wardrobe with them. Beyond the differences in the structures and silhouettes between these two jackets, this jacket also has significantly less fringe on it than the other one, which as much as I love that jacket and think it is so hot and so sexy and it's exactly what I wanted, I wanted all that fringe. It can be very heavy and also quite overstimulating sometimes to have it, especially when I'm moving around. And there's just, there's gonna be days when I'm not in the mood for that, but I'm still wanting to wear fringe. And that's when I get to pull this baby out. It's a lot lighter. It's not quite as intense with the fringe, but you still get that same effect. Now, if you thought we were done with the vintage fringe, you were mistaken because what do you think happened when last week I walked into a thrift store that actually one of you recommended me on Instagram to check out and I saw this bag which just so happens to not only be fringe, which clearly I'm in a place of, but also be a purse and a funky purse, which I have been going on and on about in videos, wanting to expand my just purse collection in general, but especially when it comes to cool purses. So obviously when I saw this, I was like, yeah, I, I need that just like immediately. In the past, I have spoken about not being the biggest fan of polyester. It's not even polyester specifically that I'm so anti, it's more so synthetic fabric fabrics as a whole, and I'm not completely anti against them. I'm just against adding them to my closet in this moment. That being said, there is an exception to every rule, and one of the exceptions has been the 70s novelty button up top. I've seen a couple on some of the people I follow online as well as all over my Pinterest, and I've always thought that it would be so fun to have one in my wardrobe. So when I walked into a thrift store and they had a bunch of dead stock novelty tops from the 70s, <laughs> had a whole variety of novelty tops going on that I could choose from. I ended up going with this one though because I loved the colors, a lot of warm tones with the pinks and the corals, the sort of persimony reds with that pop of green I really liked. And I also thought it was funny that there were planes all over it because this just so happened to be during that week where it felt like every day some sort of Boeing plane was malfunctioning and I was like, oh, that's topical. That's top of mind right now. That's kind of fun and kitschy. And you're getting a sick look into my inner workings and, and world and the way that I process things right now. Not one, not two, but three pairs of Levi jeans all from a different variation of Goodwills, all for around $10. I'm a Levi's girl through and through. They are my jean of choice, especially the Levi's 550s. I am a 550s truther. I think they are the best style of the Levi's, especially if you're wanting that oversized, low-waisted, baggy jean, but it fits you in the waist and is baggy everywhere else, especially 
especially in the thighs. These are definitely my favorite pair that I got. They've also just easily been my most worn. I truly believe that the perfect pair of jeans for you is life-changing. And of course that jean is going to be different for every person. It's gonna have a different set of qualifications, right? Like for me, I wanted the more low-waisted and baggy, but still fitted enough to where I didn't feel like it was sloppy. I also like this sort of distressed vintage look not the most ideal setup for trying to show off jeans once again like there's only so much in my room i can work with you should be able to throw your perfect jeans on with just a simple tee in your wardrobe your everyday shoe for me it's the boot of course for a lot of people it's a sneaker maybe a ballet flat if you wear jewelry put that on as well your bag your purse and if it is a look if it's cute it's going to be more simple it's going to be casual it's going to be easy but it also, it's gonna be cute and it's gonna look great if you got the right jeans. The other pair of 550s, it's still the same look, still that same vibe. They're a slightly darker wash, but still have that kind of worn in distressed look that I really love. And even though they're slightly tighter, they still are loose enough that I find them really comfortable for everyday wear. If I haven't convinced you to check out some 550s yet, I am not doing my job correctly. Also some 505s, those are great. The 550s and the 505s. I can't recommend enough. This last pair I picked up though is neither. These are actually a Levi's 501. Not usually my preferred style of Levi's, but they are definitely the most popular and the most well-known. My issue with these is that most of the time when they fit in my waist, they're too tight in my thighs. And then when they fit baggy enough in my thighs that I like, they're so loose in the waist, like not even a belt can help me most of the time. But I saw these and I tried them on because I was wearing a dress at this thrift store, so I just slipped them on under and they fit so perfectly in a way that the 501s haven't ever really fit me before in my past experience. I've been wanting a pair of dark wash jeans for a while and I think with the sort of former sleeker silhouette of the 501, it works better with the dark wash than I think it does with the light wash. Immediately a very different sort of vibe. Like we all felt the vibe shift when I showed up in these jeans. They're more tailored. They have this kind of sleeker look also a lot tighter in the thighs, not nearly as much mobility, not like I'm in public doing this ever, but I just, I would like the option with my jeans, just in Even case. Even the literal feel of the denim on these is a lot more thick and stiffer than it was on those other two pairs. Like those felt very lived in. These do not, which I don't think that has anything to do with these being the style of 501s and the fact that these are probably just lived in less. They weren't worn as much as those other pairs, so. I'm very happy and excited about all three of these. I mean, they're jeans. They're a wardrobe staple. They're a classic. And they were something that I actually caught myself looking into my closet like, I don't think I own enough of these. But that problem is solved now. Do I even really need to explain myself with this next item? I mean, I think it's, it's kind of speaking for itself. What did I tell you earlier about gingham? What did I, it is always gonna have a place on my thrift list. I don't think that I will ever believe I own enough gingham. There is always room for more in my wardrobe. And if there's not, I will make room for it. I loved how long this was. I loved the color detailing. I obviously loved the gingham. I thought the buttons were so sweet. And the fact that it's actually from the 1940s, I was like, okay, <laughs> say less. You got me there. This dress is just another example of how the smallest details within an item really make the biggest difference for me. Similarly to the varsity cardigan I showed earlier with the buttons. The buttons on this, I guess I have the thing with buttons. I mean, I'm really picky about them. I don't like when they look really plasticky or cheap or they're like shiny or pearlescent in any sort of way. And I loved that these buttons were the same gingham fabric as the rest of the dress. It just, it did a lot for me in all of the right ways. We're getting down to the last couple of finds, actually. I have one more from the Rose Bowl, so I think we'll just, whew. And it's a good one. If you thought everything that I've showed you up until this point was good, Moment of silence, please. I, I, I don't even know where to begin with this jacket, truthfully. It's just, well, I will say that this was the one item from Rose Bowl I bought that was not on my thrift list because I didn't even know something like this existed. I didn't know something so perfect was on this earth and something that was so me because if I did know, it obviously would have been top of that list. But as soon as my eyes laid upon this jacket, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I've never been so sure of any purchase in my entire life. It's from the 1920s. It's velvet in just the most insane, beautiful, stunning shade of emerald green. And it has all of this embroidered silvery gold detailing on it. I'm just like, actually, I'm just so, I'm so speechless. And I cannot believe 
that I own this and that this is mine. This is the thing that exists in my closet. I'm actually, I'm not able to look at this jacket and just immediately just beam with the biggest smile that I'm capable of, which is helping me justify the price of it. Not that I think it needs to be justified because of how obsessed I am with this, but it was also the priciest thing that I bought at the Rose Bowl that day and also the most expensive thing out of this entire haul. But again, like I'm holding a piece of history right now. I am just like, this is going to be in my life and in my closet forever like come into the grave with me all right we're talking graveyard item with this jacket my quest for all of the bandanas and handkerchiefs and neck scarves that I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the last thrift haul I did back in what was that November or December of 2023 yeah that's not stopped I'm still not over that face. I, I'm actually, it's, I think I can say it's not a face anymore. Thrown up in my hair, around my neck, around a bag, around a belt loop. There's just so much you can do. They're so versatile. They're also really easy and cheap to find at like any thrift store or flea market. I did also want to get my hands on some silk sort of handkerchiefs though, which I didn't actually have any of these. I have like 30 bandanas now. I'm cut off. It's a problem. But these I didn't have any of, so it wasn't that hard to justify the purchase. I really loved the paisley patterns that both of these have going on. I also liked the different colorways between this eggplant and then all of the blues and browns. I thought they were both really pretty and I also liked that they were both 100% silk and no satin or polyester involved because, you know, I'm the exception to the one rule was that top but not when it comes to these. That's where I stand my ground. And then lastly, here we are. We have made it the last item I got in this thrift haul and it is the most beautiful, gorgeous, 100% cotton maxi skirt. If it hasn't already been made kind of obvious, I am a big fan of maxi length items. Uh, one, because I just like the way they look. I think they work well on my body with my proportions. I love to twirl the dramatic effect of it like trailing behind me as I walk. But two, I am clumsy and I bruise very easily. And with me constantly running into just immobile objects, even like a strong gust of wind, I'm convinced causes me to bruise. This solves that issue easily. Between the fit of this skirt, it's more low-waisted, which I really love. I also thought the pattern and the colors on it were just beautiful. I don't own anything like this. And so when I saw it at the thrift store for $6, I was like, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Twist my arm, like, oh, do I have to bring it home with me? And yeah. There we go. There we, I need a sip of this. That's gonna be it for this video. For, for this haul that I did state early on, I think might just be the best haul that either you or I have ever seen on this platform. Did it hold up? Was I was I wrong? I'm so annoying. Um, but I'm also incredibly excited about all of these things to be styling them. I kind of styled them in this video, but don't worry, there is going to be more where that came from in the future. My room is a disaster, like always, and my camera battery is about to die again, like always, with my videos. It's one big yapathon for hours endlessly. So I'm gonna go before that happens. Thank you so much for watching, though. I really do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye.